Have you ever been invited to ride shotgun in a friend's pride and joy and got to the point where you sit down in the passenger seat and there's just a weird feeling under your feet? So obviously what we just looked at in the passenger footwell of that car was slightly exaggerated, but you get the idea. In a typical six cylinder application, I always seem to find myself with pretty much these left over at the end. I didn't have a need for them at the time of the installation, but there's no need to just have these bundled under the carpet like this with bare ends of some, um, some leads that could be potentially hazardous towards the ECU and possibly even starting a fire if something's not fused properly. So I'm gonna show you what to do with these leftover wires and how to use them nice and effectively now and possibly in the future and possibly even for the next owner of the car. So like I said, we're using the example of a six cylinder. So I've got a couple of ignition outputs left over and I've got a couple of injectors left over. I've also got an input, which is a digital input or what we call an SPI. And I've also got a couple of grounds, 12 volts and five volts left over, simply because the engine side just didn't need them. I could coil these up and then just hide them away and no one would ever really know. We often get a lot of questions in via email that say, what do I do with all these spare wires? Should I just depin them? Sometimes the answer is yes, because your four cylinder, you may not need the extra wires that you have to ever maybe run a six cylinder in the future. It's just not gonna happen. So yes, you probably could just depin those and everything would be fine. Where I suggest not depinning is sometimes outputs that you may need to use and always inputs. I never have a need to depin an input because they are very, very handy and can be very, very flexible for so many different things. So when I'm designing a harness or planning a harness and figuring out how I'm gonna do it the best I can, I'm trying to think ahead for what a customer is going to maybe need in the future. So up near, let's just say where the fuel injectors are or where the coils are, I often run a spare input with a five volt and a signal ground and I actually label that as a spare input. That spare input can often be used for maybe fuel pressure. If there wasn't something for fuel pressure on that engine to start with, it may be a coolant pressure sensor. It may be a switch of some variety that you want out in the engine bay. There are so many different things it can be used for, which is really, really handy in the future. Same goes for the inside. You may want to one day wire up a switch on the inside, or maybe you want to measure uh, line pressure on your gearbox or maybe a temperature on your gearbox if you have an automatic transmission. Running those wires that you've already kind of terminated and sheathed straight through the tunnel, straight to that sensor, makes the job nice and easy and quick because you thought ahead about doing that. When you've depinned these wires, doing that job, it's not harder, but it just makes the job a bit more difficult and time consuming because you've got to then pull apart everything you've already done, which might be nice and neat. And if you're using DR25 heat shrink, that's not gonna be fun because you have to cut it all back and then get access to all those wires that look so neat once upon a time. So here's a loom I've prepared earlier. Um, it is for a V8 application. Uh, it is naturally aspirated, but in the future, maybe we may need a boost control solenoid to control a set of turbos or maybe one gigantic turbo. I have thought ahead and made a spare DPO. This digital pulsed output has a spare 12 volt and a spare output, and I've labeled that output as DPO2 and called it spare. I could be presumptuous and say boost control and put this on this output, but it wouldn't really make sense because that output is not in the ECU and set up. So it's up to you. You can, there's many different ways you can tackle this, but this is what makes sense to me and the person that I'm making this loom for. So Deutsch connectors or DTM connectors, very, very easy to deep in, and then you can slide a new label over the top and then repin it. That's why I like these so much. It just makes a lot of sense. Likewise for inputs, 
I don't know what this input might be used for later on, which is why I've gone for the Deutsch connector again and labeled this one as a spare AVI 10, unlike maybe the, a fuel pressure. I know where the fuel pressure sensor would go on this car because it's gonna be near the fuel rail. So I've put it with enough length to go either side of the fuel rail where there will be a regulator. So that's why I've opted to put a connector on this one, even though this engine doesn't have one right now. So you can see how important it is to think ahead and come up with creative things that may need to happen in the future so that you can get an idea of what you're doing with your loom so you can get it finished. Having these bare wires out in the engine bay is probably not what I would suggest doing myself. I would always put a connector on it, no matter what connector it is, it doesn't really matter, just so they are safe and insulated. As you can see, I always use the female pin side of the Deutsch connector so that it can't physically short out on anything or a bolt or something like that. So always a good tip to always use this side with the wedge that's closed off as the pins are all uh, completely insulated and use the software so that you can find out what you can do and can't do so that you don't get caught out trying to run a wire that doesn't do a function that you thought it might. So we'll step into the software side of things so you can help plan your job even better. So I've got my laptop. Uh, I've made a great big map and input and outputs assigned ready to go for what I want and what I need in the engine bay and inside. Now I'm doing all my spares. So I'm looking at the things I may or may not need. Um, I haven't quite come up with something that I need yet, but I know that on this particular installation with my PD-16, I have a spare input that I've run in the boot. Uh, this could be used for a temperature, this could be used for a pressure sensor or anything, a switch, maybe like a fuel pump switch in the boot so that we can test fuel pumps. There are so many different things that can be done. So what I've done is I've just called this voltage input and assigned it to an AVI, of course, I wouldn't be able to assign a DPO to this wire because the software won't allow me to assign an output to an input for this type of sensor. So the other thing that I find really, really handy is that with the generics here, I can assign a name and I can say where this is for the future. So this helps me or it helps the customer that I'm wiring this up for or it helps the friend that I'm helping out know where this wire is in the car in the future. It doesn't do anything and it's not connected to anything, but we just leave it on as a spare, as a generic, so that we can find this wire. So even with some PD-16 8 amp outputs, I had a couple of spare left over because I had a PD-16 in the boot of this car. So what I actually did was keep a couple of outputs and put them in the boot as well of this car. Um, they're just there, so if I need to run something extra in the future, maybe like a light in the boot or a strip of LEDs, or maybe I need to put on a different reverse light or something like that, or the brake light fails, or we need to do a brake light in the boot on top of the passenger shelf. I've got all these outputs ready to go. Um, I've labeled these so I know exactly what they're gonna be and I've told the user where they are in the boot. I've sort of planned for extra outputs and eight amps, which the ECU is just always gonna be evolving. The user is always gonna be using more of the ECU and taking up more and more inputs and outputs and this helps us get there. So now that I've told myself in the software that where this is gonna be for future reference, I'm just gonna put a really quick label on it. Nothing too fancy. Oh, there's no point in going out and buying a great big roll of printable heat shrink or anything like that if you're not doing this full time. I just put a little bit of heat shrink over the end. For this, I'm using a Deutsch connector because I don't know what it's gonna be for in the future, but this just helps protect the wires and the wire ends. I put a little bit of heat shrink. It doesn't need to be glued. It doesn't need to be anything super fancy, but I had the glued one here today. I just put that down as a base. I grab myself a very, very normal Dymo sticky label. I stick it on that heat shrink so it's got nice and something, something nice and firm to stick to. 
a bit of clear heat shrink. You can get this from your local electronics store. They will have this in one meter lengths. Um, so this is a 10 mil. You probably could get away with a six mil, but the 10 mil shrinks down pretty well. And I'll just use a little bit of heat from a torch. If you have a heat gun, obviously use a heat gun. It's probably a nice and neater way of doing it. But as you can see, that's just a nice, neat way of knowing what this wire or this plug is without having to do any investigation. Uh, this can also help when your tuner goes, hey, what we're gonna need to do this engine tune properly is a X sensor or this temperature or something in the future, and you are ready to go. You already know that you've got the headroom to do extra inputs straight away without having to do any investigation. So I find this really, really helpful for yourself and even your tuner. Cool, so let's recap. So first, plan. It's very, very, very important to plan every single connector and every function that we think we're gonna need and for things we don't need yet or things that might be useful and fun to play with because this is really, really fun. Next, you wanna group your bundle of wires. So if you've got an input, you know you will need probably a signal ground and most likely a five volt because that's the majority of what most sensors use. So make sure you run those wires with your group so that you can terminate it nicely. Leave those pins in down at the ECU connector. We don't wanna pull out everything because we might lose those wires and not know where the rest of those wires are because we put them in that safe place that we just, is so safe we don't even know where they are. Always keep them pinned at the ECU connector because it's gonna make your life a lot easier and it helps you expand your engine management system. And if you're not sure what to put on the end, grab a Deutsch connector. They're available everywhere. They're really, really easy to work with and they're easy to work around and undo. So they're very, very flexible for every single automotive need. And lastly, of course, don't forget to just throw a label on it. It's so easy and so quick to do at the time that you'll save yourself a lot of diagnostic work later and multimeters and pinouts and just general confusion. This just makes the job so much easier. Hopefully these little tips and ideas plant that seed for you to get your loom from 80% finished all the way to 100% finished and looking absolutely schmick. If you've got your own special unique way of doing this, please let us know and share with us so we can all learn together. It's always great to hear how other people do it in different parts of the world. So it's really, really educational. I really enjoy it. So thanks for watching. My name's Dave. I'll catch up with you next time. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.